Time now for Tuesday morning quarterback when CBS News special correspondent and host of the NFL Today, James Brown, brings us his top stories of the week. And JB is here with us now to go through some of those stories. Good to see you, JB. Good to see you again. And with everything that's on your plate, this is the <laughs> toughest part of your week, is it not? <laughs> hey, this is the most fun that I have during the week when I get to hang out with you. I'm sure Anne Marie's really bummed that she's not here. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start with the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, big win for the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night. Russell Wilson, man, what, he's, he's just like, this is an MVP quality year for him. And you mentioned MVP quality year. And can you believe that he's not ever gotten an MVP vote uh, eight years now? Vlad, he really is the face of the league. Good man of faith, clean cut, uh, about kids. Even all of the marketing sponsorships that he has, and Alvin Patrick and I, my senior producer with uh, CBS News, we recently did a CBS Sunday morning profile on him. Every sponsorship deal he gets, he ensures that at least, say, around five or more percentage dollars of what he gets goes to meaningful or organizations, mm. uh, at-risk kids, educationally focused, just a good guy. But he's Mr. Steady, and they've got it. So now they are the number one team in the NFC West, and right now the number one uh, seed in the uh, the NFC, uh, if you will, the, the, the football conference on the national side of the house. So they're doing quite well. There's another guy uh, you talked about that is doing quite well. He's actually on my fantasy football uh, team, Lamar Jackson. You have him on I your fantasy team? I got Lamar team? Jackson. I picked him up. Like, I didn't know how good he was going to be, and and he's the only thing keeping me alive, actually. <laughs> wow, talk about being very precious in what you did. I want to say that I was a great general manager, but it really was sort of luck of the draw. Did you have uh, analytics working for you yeah, in that regard? Sure no, look here, and, and I said this before, I know it's an indelicate way of expressing it to a general population, but in football vernacular, we say that he is a freak because he is supernatural, preternatural, whatever you mm. want to use in what he does. And he's redefining what football, the quarterback position, is all about. They had a very competitive, very closely played game with San Francisco, which I think that team has been the biggest surprise of the football season. So now they've taken over as the number one seed in the AFC as a result of that victory over that NFC team. Um, and they did it in a driving rain, wet field, and Lamar, who people were questioning whether or not he could be the prototypical quarterback, being able to throw with accuracy in the whole nine yards, he did it both ways, passing and running on mm. a wet field and making people look like they were stuck in the mud. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, an another quarterback who has been described in much the same way mm -hmm. is Tom Brady, but this year, perhaps, uh, there are some who are looking at uh, how well or how well he hasn't done. Mm -hmm. over the course of this season and they're wondering you know if the era of Tom Brady might be over and you and I were before this segment we were talking about you know he's 42 I believe right mm -hmm. and we were looking back at some of the great quarterbacks Phil Simms Dan Marino Joe Montana these guys all retired before they hit 40 and by the time they retired I mean they had clearly lost a step Tom Brady up until this year hadn't lost a step but maybe I don't know what do you what do you what do you think I want to take you with me when I go to record inside the NFL today so that you can say that to Phil Sims who sits right next to me that he had clearly Love lost Phil a step Sims. not Good that he ever Phil. had a step in the first place but that's true <laughs> Tom Brady is clearly rewriting the record book for success and efficiency and winning at that age he's been in the league now 20 years they call him the goat you know I would say he's certainly the best of this era I never go and say somebody was the best of all time that's pretty tough mm -hmm. to give somebody that moniker but yeah they are slipping uh, statistically if you look at it there's no denying that they're not as dominant they're not as successful as they have been but on the other side of the ledger he doesn't have the same kind of weapons particularly the wide receiver position uh, that he's had before defense has been carrying the day there but they're still 10 and 2 and I won't bet against them I until feel you. until somebody else dethrones them they are still the reigning champs. Yeah, no, I think it's 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 a good it's a good point. I mean, uh, look at their record and there will be a lot of teams who'd say, "You know what? Give me an aging Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. I can win." <laughs> and you know, and it's been he and Bill Belichick together. They have dominated things six Super Bowl victories uh, since they've been together. Uh, look, it, it's a tough league. They're every, everybody's shooting at them every week and Bill Belichick is is the master one of his favorite books 
the art of war. Mm. He will continue to shore up the weaknesses that they have and maximize against the weaknesses of other teams. So he's he's quite good at it. Yeah, maybe before uh, we uh, wrap this up, I'll have Alvin check. Remember George Blanda? That's from oh, my yes. day. He played like he played a long time. Hundred years. <laughs> that was the one you and I were trying to figure out. Now who's the oldest? <laughs> because not only was he a great quarterback, he could also kick. That's right. That's, as right. Well, that's why too. he was still on the sidelines for, for many years. He might have been a hundred when he was playing. Though. Yeah, <laughs> the great George Blanda. Um, all right. Let's switch to another dynasty uh, that some perhaps say is fading. Mm. I don't want fans on the internet to go after me on here uh, mm -hmm. on this, but uh, college football, they're saying Bama mm -hmm. they lost the Iron Bowl this weekend against Auburn. Is it the end of Roll Tide Roll? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's still one of the most intense rivalries. I worked a few of those Iron Bowls when I was a sideline reporter in my early days at the, at CBS. Look, Bama still has the most talent. They've got more players in the NFL than any other college. Mm. They play in the toughest football conference in all of college football. That's the SEC. Uh, yes, you know what? Everybody aims for them every game out, so they've got to have their best every time. But just because they won't be in the postseason for the first time in forever, they are still a very dominant team. I would not say that they're slipping. All right. Uh, and you wanted to talk about the passing of a man named uh, Seymour Seawalk before we go. Mm -hmm. He died on Friday at the age of 99, and he played a really big role in sports <clears throat> over the last half century. Mm -hmm. Explain. And as much as we talk about in today's football, as a matter of fact, in today's professional sports, analytics are driving many of the decisions that coaches and GMs make from an organizational standpoint. The Elias Sports Bureau was the go-to bureau for statistics by all of the major leagues. Gosh, it's been there forever mm. and a day. So you could say that was the foundation stone upon which analytics has been built because analytics takes the statistical information but adds a lot more context to it so that you can make good business decisions about the players that you want to draft as well as organizational decisions in terms of building a roster. Um, Mr. Seawolf certainly deserves an awful lot of credit. Yeah, and I, I read that it started in 1952 or something like Isn't that. Isn't that amazing? So he was ahead time. of the game. Hey, and speaking of being ahead of the game, Red Auerbach of Boston Celtics fame was a guy who probably was the best in utilizing analytics before it became popular because whenever I talk with Mr. Auerbach, I called him Coach Auerbach, about decisions that he was making on building his team, he says many people just look at statistics very superficially. He wants to know, look inside of the stats. When does a guy who's leading the team in steals, when do those steals occur? Mm. Do they occur early in the game when it's, you know, insignificant or at the end of the game when the game is on the line? That's one of the reasons why he had a guy like Casey Jones on the team. So he read inside of the statistics in terms of making decisions about the team roster, who got paid what. Analytics dominates the day with that. Red Arbeck was way ahead of them. Really fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. JB, always good to have you, man. Good we'll see you, see you next Tuesday. Sounds good. Tuesday morning okay. quarterback. We'll mm -hmm. see you next Tuesday.